Is there a wig hair tangled in the light? Do you see what I'm looking at? Yeah, I think so. Okay, great. I Hi, think- Jimbo. How are you? Good. How are you? So good. Yeah. I'm glad to see you. Look at this backdrop. Oh, my God. Yeah, your setup is a lot better than ours. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you go to the flag. Go we have a flag. Yeah, that's it. We're in a basement. <laughs> Next, I love it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just, I, yeah. It's Lady Gaga on a horse. I don't know. Yeah, good job. <laughs> yeah. So it's cool. so nice to meet you. Right. Yeah, hopefully so one day in person. <laughs> yeah, we will for sure. One day. That would be lovely. Um, how is how's your first press day going? How is everything? How's the whole experience? Oh my, it was, it's crazy. It's actually the second day. I did press all day yesterday. Nice. And so that was, you know, a little bit easier because I hadn't seen the episode yet. So I was still all like, yes, everything's wonderful. You know, and then after watching last night's episode, it's, you know, I'm definitely in a different space than I was yesterday. I'm definitely feeling um, a bit sad about, you know, being eliminated and, there's so much to celebrate and there's so much good that, you know, I'm obviously over the moon with being involved and my time and my representation and all of that. But yeah, I'm definitely feeling the, feeling the, the sadness of, you know, my dream ending a little bit different than I had really wanted it to end. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you were phenomenal. You were a huge fan favorite Everybody we've talked to, uh, every time I say, who are you really enjoying? I think every single person has said Jimbo. <laughs> like you were everybody's favorite, which I think is so phenomenal because you were just so quirky and fun. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. Enjoyed and, and so grateful that um, something about my story and my, you know, who I am resonates so much. And I'm just so grateful that I can... I can inspire people and that people see bits of themselves in me and it's really amazing and it's really encouraging and and I'm so grateful and I'll continue to do it. That thrills me. You said you were a little bit um, sad yesterday. Was it a little bit better that you were with somebody from the cast at like a viewing party or? You were with Alona, right? Yeah, Alona. Yeah, I was with Alona and you know, I didn't, I hadn't really thought about the feeling of watching the show in front of people, what that would have been like. And so that was very intense to be on stage and then to realize I am watching my dream shatter and I am shattering. And so I melted into a puddle and I tried so hard to keep my shit together, but I was devastated. And so having my family and my friends there was so, so beautiful and everyone being so kind and supportive and loving and celebratory. And then of course, having Alona there, you know, she fixed my makeup up and, you know, she gave me a pep talk and just being so sweet. And we also had our, our friend Quana here, who's an amazing. Oh, we, we love Quana. We love Quana. Quana, so Quana is Alona's drag mom, as you know, and she's just the most beautiful person. So she was here and just giving me such beautiful, kind words, and my brother and my partner, Brady, everyone has just been so, so, so amazing. So, yeah. Aww. That's so excellent. I'm so glad that you had all that that's, support around you. With Quana there, that's a lot of titty that's in one a lot room. Of, Oh, yeah, you and Quana in one place, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> excellent. But she's an amazing person to have around, though, when you need a pep talk, because she will just, like, pep talk you straight through the ceiling. Oh, she is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. But also I think that it's okay to, you know, if you, even if you had unexpected feelings, I mean, people love authenticity and vulnerability, right? So I'm sure people, it's just another way for people to connect with you seeing that like, this really did mean so much to you, right? So, so, so much. Yeah. 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 Um, we were also sort of just wondering, you talked about, you know, your story and your journey and these kinds of things. On the show, you referenced several times having your drag rooted in a, like a, cl- a history of clown experience. I was wanting to ask you about that. I know a couple other drag queens, like we know Ivy Winters very well, and she was a clown for several years before co- becoming a drag queen, and then she incorporated it. Did you, like, where did your clown experience come from, and how did the two get involved, or were they always really intersectional? Right. Um, So uh, I started to perform with a vaudeville troupe here um, in Victoria about 13 years ago. And 
Um, so it was my first time sort of getting on stage and putting myself out there. And I didn't really understand the whole dynamic of it, of, you know, do you stand on stage and they're cheering for you? Or, you know, what is it? You know, what is the bowing? What does it all mean? And so it was really confusing, the idea that you have to go ahead of time, that you need to conceive what you're going to think of, you need to think of what's going to be funny, and then you need to present that in such a way that the people laugh when you think that they're going to laugh, and then you respond to them. And so that whole process was really weird to me. Um, and so when I, I started doing Clown, and Clown is all about being truthful in the moment, and it's about being a conduit for your audience. And it's about a conversation based in truth and authenticity. And it's about the joy of shared surprise. So when you are so present and you are so there and you are not judging yourself and you are letting the flow through you, that's where there's true magic and joy and comedy. And so when I when I felt that and I thought, oh, it's it's not that I need to think of what's funny before and present that and they need to laugh when I thought they're gonna laugh. It's I'm going to just be who I am in this moment and I'm going to have the best time and I'm going to listen to what my audience likes. And I'm going to give them more of that and I'm going to take them to places, you know, you can hear where people are like, no, like, oh my God, you're going to do that. Oh, shit. oh she's doing it. Oh, she did. Oh, she did it. You know, that feeling of like, yeah. oh, that's what you want me to do. You want me to stick this hot dog in my ear until it bursts. It's like, okay, you know, I can do that. So that's what the clown does. It sort of goes the place that the audience wants to go but it, the clown will go there for you and so i did that for a long time um not a long time but for a while i was clowning and i my first drag clown was um my ex-stepmother who was a wretched demon from the depths of hell that to try to ruin my life and okay. so um i exercised her from my being by embodying her but the clown version of her and then I screamed and I tore out all my hair and I looked so hideous and I pulled some lipstick out of my bloated vagina and I had a prolapsed anus and my tits were all long. I just, I took out everything that was toxic that she had left inside of me and I brought it to the surface of my body and I excised it through a performance and the audience was laughing and some of my friends were crying and they were like, what the fuck was that? And I was like, that was my ex stepmother getting out of my body and my mom was like wow like you can use this as therapy hon and we've got <laughs> lots to go through and i was like yes mama and so um from there i kind of i was always interested in femininity i always interested in being really pretty and i was really told as a young boy that those are girl things and that you like trucks and you like dirt and you like building stuff and you like playing with balls and you don't like girls and you don't want to bake stuff. You don't want to wear fancy things. You don't want anything to be flowy. You want things to be, you know, very plain. And so it was like very contrary to me. I wanted to be sparkly. I wanted to be fabulous. I wanted to be yeah. free. I wanted, you know, fancy, beautiful things. And so for a long time that was told that that was gay and I was not supposed to be gay because being gay is bad and your life is gonna be so hard. So I needed to be straight and I needed to present straight. And if I wanna have an easy life and if I wanna, you know, da, da 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 all the things my dad told me, I need to be straight. And so he burned all of my gay things. He burned anything he thought would be uh, a challenge of my masculinity, anything he saw me gravitate towards that he considered feminine, he burnt in our fireplace, literally. And so I was sort of very afraid of my feminine side. It had become a really shameful thing that yeah. it was a challenge of my masculinity. It was a challenge of my sexuality. And so um, it was only through clown that I was able to allow myself to accept that part of me and to celebrate that part of me that um, being feminine and celebrating the feminine is not a sign of weakness. It's a strength. And to live my truth and to live my best life and to have the most fun, that can take any form. And so for me, it's, it happens to be a drag clown. And sometimes I'm a beautiful lady and sometimes I'm some twisted little creature. And it's all okay. And 
Um, yeah, so I, I became a drag clown slowly over time, but it was mostly in just accepting who I am and accepting that it's okay to be gay and it's okay to be, you know, kind of feminine. It's okay to be super masculine. It's everything is okay as long as you are okay and you are living your truth. And so that's how I've aligned the two. I love that. So like a natural progression. I feel like I just learned about a phenomenon called the clown cleanse. <laughs> and I think that that's a really effective way of dealing with things. Oh I'm kind of obsessed God. with that. And then that's at the end, you buy a gigantic breastplate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the prize at the end. That's what you get to treat yourself to. Yeah, exactly. Is that, is that thing like, does that hurt your back to carry around? Oh my God. Well, so over time, yeah, but it's all balanced, you know, between the corset and then sometimes I'm wearing two corsets, a corset on top of my corset for the look. And then, you know, my nails, I can't do anything with the nails. Like if you've got to go pee and you have to try and find your dick that is buried between your butt in a tight <laughs> costume, it is a nightmare. And then, you know, you've got the heels and then you've got eight layers of spanks and a hose. So you know, eventually it becomes just a drop in the bucket and you're locked and loaded in your like mech transformer body. And sometimes I just feel like two little eyes peeping out of a pile of stuff. And I bent, you know, I really am. I'm basically like a walking garage sale sometimes. It just looks really good. God. Uh, so I love that. It is funny, you know, people see me and I'm so big when I'm in drag and then, you know, I, I slip out of my body and my tits come off and my ass comes off and my hair comes off and my face comes off and I'm just a tiny little guy. <laughs> just, this, just a little person this, inside. This, this, like tiny little man hops out and is like, hello. <laughs> um, like the aliens in Men in Black when yeah. they, they pilot the human yeah. and then they jump yeah. out. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Our friend Van der Van Odd once told us that uh, they think that we can only make it to so many shows as we do because we're secretly just squirrels inside powering human robots. And like, that's, that's right. what I'm picturing now. It's just you stepping out of A this like squirrel. glamorous like robot as this <laughs> teeny little creature. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, moments that happen uh, for the audience, how long... <laughs> How long were you on the ground when you were exiting? And I feel like when you fell over, I was like, she's never getting back up again. <laughs> I, yeah, that felt like a long time. I just <laughs> laid my face on the stage breathing. I was breathing heavily and I could hear them laughing. And I just laid there and I just, you know, the, my entrance was the same thing. I didn't really think about what I was gonna do. They're like, what are you gonna say? And I was like, I just wanna see what happens. I wanna see, what noise I make, what sound, what words come to me. I want to. That's wanna very trusting of yourself. It and then say it. And so that's, you know, I walked in and that's exactly what I said. And at the end, I, I hadn't <laughs> thought about what I was going to say at all. And, you know, my whole life, I've been waiting for the trauma and the pain to drop to my knees and scream, why? And, you know, usually it's over like a loved one or maybe your whole house got blown away or the world is sunk into the ocean. You know, there's certain like really big moments that call for that. And so it just came over me at that time. I was, my dream had shattered into a thousand pieces and I was broken and I fell to my knees and screamed why and then fell on my face and just, I just died there for a little while. That, that whole bit of me died there. And so I laid there and I died for and then I dragged myself away. I can just picture you waiting as your breath like fogs the stage and back and I just, fogs <laughs> it and back. In my fantasy, you were there for like an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> just a while. It was a while. But I was lucky that the crown and, you know, everything kind of held my face up off the ground. So <laughs> by some miracle, my face didn't actually smash the ground. Everything else smashed it. But I still remember the kind of bouncing off of the ground. And it was really sweet. The crew then, you know, when we came in for the the finale, some of the crew were wearing bits of my crown that, um, you know, as I died and imploded, chunks of me flew around. So it was really sweet to see them, you know, having a piece of me on them. And I thought that was really beautiful. That's lovely. It's delightful. Um, so right before we came on to speak to you today, a friend of ours, tweeted and said that their boyfriend had just expressed an interest in having 
a Jimbo themed birthday, birthday party, party because they love you so much. What would, if you could put together a Jimbo themed birthday party, like what would that look like and entail? Well, you know, I love lots of stuff. You know, if you go to the dollar store and you buy one pack of balloons, it's like it's a buck, or you could buy 20 packs of balloons and it's 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Balloon is only a hundred bucks. So, you know, I really like to just go big, you know, get all the streamers. When I, when we do streamers here, we streamer the fuck out of it. We're not just like, let's twist up one or two of those streamers and have them meet in the middle. It's every streamer everywhere, all, everywhere. And then balloons yeah. everywhere. And then, you know, there would be a food fight. People would have their tits out. There'd be, you know, maybe a, like deep pool with some jello, you know, I want to have lots of balloons, tons of balloons, but biodegradable yeah. ones, mother nature. Yeah, uh, we're also, green. Fair. And then like that gel that has the glitter in it where you rub it all around. Have you ever had that? Oh, oh yes. I know what you're talking about, but I've never oh, had it. Yes. But I have like, it was at Burning Man. I did it one time. The only um, rule in this camp was that you can't spread your own glitter on yourself. And it was so fun. Everyone dancing in the sunshine, <laughs> just rubbing glitter everywhere. It was amazing until someone, I was so sweaty and dirty and caked in like dust. And this person came up behind me. They just squeezed out the entire bottle into their hand and smacked it on the back of my neck. <laughs> I was like, wow, uh, thank you. you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> It was so You've still funny. got some back there today, like. <laughs> yeah, still some there. Just a little bit, just a little tiny bit. I love that. Oh my god. Um, party would be yeah, everything, everything. Sparkles, sprinklers, you know, strippers. Oh, sprinklers. Mm, oh. I like that. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. 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 Um, do you want to do your the lightning round? The lightning round. Okay, we're gonna do a lightning round. I'm gonna say this or this. They're really stupid. <laughs> Just pick one, whatever comes to your head first. So, um, poutine or maple syrup? Maple syrup on my poutine. That would be tasty. Oh, no one's ever said that before. No one now I'm gonna think about that. it for the rest of the day. Uh, yes. Beaver or moose? Oh, I like that beaver. Well, you know, I love <laughs> moose too. But I love. You know, I love that beaver. I love those buck teeth. I love that big flat tail. I love how they work the front of the nickel. You know, those <laughs> beavers and whatever. Fair, fair, fair. Um, Smarties or coffee, Chris? Smarties and eat the red ones last. Oh my right gosh. Then. I forgot about that song right now. You just unearthed like a deep Canadian childhood memory. Uh, ketchup chips or all dressed chips? Ketchup chips. I love the way they stain your fingers and you can lick your fingers. It's like the <laughs> chips are gone. You still have them flavors. It's like saving a snack for later. All right, right. Oh, God. Degrassi. <laughs> Degrassi or Schitt's Creek? Uh, well, you know, I haven't watched Schitt's Creek, so I have to say Degrassi. That's fair. It's pretty good. I would recommend it, but that I also like have a, terrible taste. That seems like a fair uh, decision. Do you want to do some kind of funky portrait or do you want to just do a quick selfie that we can like promo your video with and be cute together? So what would be a funky portrait? Oh. Uh, well, so we'll make you our big screen and all you have to do is like hit a pose, hold it for three <laughs> seconds, hit a pose, hold it for three seconds. And we'll like screenshot it and edit it all fun. Okay, can I put it with this coat on maybe? Oh, Hell yes. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Oh, I love this. You oh. came out in this and I oh. literally went, yeah. I need that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm. This out of six Tibetan lambskirt skin rugs. <laughs> and oh I lined God. it. Of course I you did. I love it. Oh, you made that? Oh, bitch. Yeah, yeah, of she's... course you did. Did you make all your outfits? Um, I designed them all, and, but because of the time frame, I had time. to work with sewers because you have to, you have a very limited time. Right. So yes. I had I did all my mood boards and all my inspirations, and then I, <laughs> I had uh, seven sewers sewing for me. Oh dear God! That's oh, amazing. Lord. You had little Cinderella mice. Oh my God! Oh, a oh, penguin! Yes, that's a penguin excellent. wearing sunglasses. Okay, oh, yes, cute. All okay. right, okay, Ready. perfect, excellent, excellent, and switch it up. All right, all right. Oh, she's oh, centering. Perfect. Oh, look at oh, that! Oh yeah, she can serve. Look at I that. like her. Look at that penguin. Mm -hmm. Very cute. Very cute. 
Oh, oh, the little oh, shoulder. Yes. Oh, very nice. Oh, thank you for that shoulder. I appreciate her. Yeah, that's, that's good. perfect. Thank you so much. That was fun. I was like, I don't know how to unpin it. There we go. <laughs> Help. There we go. Yay. I did it. I know how to work stuff. It was so nice to talk to you today. And I'm so glad that we got to meet. I hope that sometime we can meet in person. That would yes. be really fun. I, was, uh, I yeah. have a feeling we would. Yes, it's it's a high probability. Yeah, we, we do a lot of um, meet and greets. We run a lot of the meet and greets for photography and stuff in Toronto, which is always really fun because we really like to heckle the girls and it's and it's fun. So we will get to do that sometime. That'd be cute. Yeah. I can't wait to be heckled. Yes. <laughs> We're polite, I swear. <laughs> Canadian, we have to be. All right, well, okay. thank you for uh, coming on and bringing your little friend here. Yeah, uh, what's your friend's name? What's your penguin's name? Harry. Oh, I love oh, wait, that's Harry. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I see what you did there. Very, very funny. <laughs> All right, my darling. Well, have a good day with the rest of your press things. And we'll and hope to see you soon. You. Uh, we'll You're see you so soon. welcome. Bye. Bye-bye.